Welcome back to the Sometimes Builds. Today, we are gonna be turning these two smoke barrels into, join me. All right, good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome back to the channel. As you heard, I wanted, I finally got two burn barrels. So first off, this isn't a tutorial. I'm following the tutorial right up here. This is just another view of how to do it. I'm gonna make maybe a couple modifications here and there. But so far, all I need is a grinder, hopefully not a death wheel. I have this multi-step bit, drill of course, a measuring tape and a Sharpie, which is, this is one of them paint paint sharpies basically we're going to cut up this barrel and this barrel is going to sit inside of this barrel and it does the fancy sciency things and turns it into a smokeless burn barrel as you can see probably here in this nice after picture if this actually turned out it might just be scrap we'll find out but hopefully we'll be able to burn brush no smoke comes out very efficient turns it into dust so as again i mentioned i'm going to follow tutorial so i'm going to be going back and forth between the tutorial and what I'm doing. Okay, so obviously open end of the barrel is here, closed end of the barrel is here. I am going to be measuring a five inch line that goes from the seam over. And you might need a rag to clean off your your line, your uh, pen marker, because it doesn't like writing on this. So as you can see here, this is the seam right here. From the seam, I measured five inches and I drew a line, and then I measured one inch and then I drew a dotted line. Um, the opened end is here, the closed end is here. Of course, we're using all the safety gear for this, gloves, glasses, and ear protection, because we will be using this to cut metal and it's gonna be loud. Should probably get a respirator too, now that I think about it. It's not the best, but it's something. So first thing is gonna be cutting along the seam and then along the five inch line, not the, not the dotted line. This isn't working well, I think because it's got not it doesn't have much left all right so we have to resort to the death wheel this is the uh, air powered cutter not a whole lot of guard to it but so the only the only downside to this will be the air compressor is going to be running a lot so I might have to cut through all the air compressor stuff but this should go a lot faster so let's try it out Well, I guess we're stuck with this and I'll have to go out and get a new, a new cutting, cutting wheel for it. The, I don't, my air compressor is not big enough to keep it spinning fast enough to even cut anything. So this is our best bet and we'll just carry on. I'll be back. Okay, it wouldn't be a project without a Home Depot run. I went and got these blue, Norton Blue Fire four and a half inch diameter. That's probably way too close, but I can't tell. This is four and a half inch diameter steel, ferrous metal, stainless steel cutting discs. I've never bought any before. I've been, I've been using that same cutting disc on the other uh, angle grinder for a very long time. All right, so we ain't using that. Get our gloves back on. So I was using a Bosch, which is Charlie's, but I've had my own for a while now and Interesting. So we are hopefully not going to have this come flying off. And we're cutting, not the, not the, well, yeah, eventually the lip. I'm cutting here and here along the seam and along this line. And then I'm gonna put a strap around it. But first we just need to see if this will cut. Definitely cuts a lot faster. Now the strap is so this whole thing doesn't boing and just shoot out everywhere. That's the only reason for the strap. There. So this will keep the whole thing intact and now we can cut through. Now remember I'm cutting along the seam and I'm going to cut all the way 
up and cut the lip off. But then on the five inch line that I cut right here, I'm not cutting the lip off. I'm stopping at the lip and I'm gonna cut the lip off or I'm gonna cut under the lip over here. You'll see in a second. It'll, it'll make sense in a second. Right now we're gonna completely remove, this is the end cap, I'm gonna cut along this line and completely remove the bottom. Look at that. Good thing you got safety glasses on. That thing just fell apart. Whew. One thing the uh, tutorial doesn't tell you is you go through these cutting blades quickly. So I basically used one cutting the two lines down it and then it broke because I took it too low. And now the second one, I cut all the way around. This should come off. Yeah. There we go. The second one I've cut all the way around. I really should have put a mask on while I was doing it. Learn from my mistake. Use the second disc while cutting the bottom off. So now we have it completely Cut down the middle, off the end, the, the cap is off the bottom. Now we are going to screw it together. Per the directions, you are using the ratchet to your, as your helper to pull it together. And that extra inch that was cut on there is basically the lip that's getting screwed to. Okay, so next thing I got were these self-piercing, a.k.a. self-tapping. Self-tapping screws, I just got really random, number eight by three and a quarter inch. I got them because they're short, and I'm gonna be excited for the directions. We're gonna be cutting them off anyway, so there's no point of getting super long ones. This one's starting. So you see here, we joined these two lips together. Now I'm gonna do the same. You're right, should probably pre-drill. And I probably will. Or I'll just continue to suffer. You can continue suffering or you can pre-drill. It's not that hard to pre-drill. at that. Doing it the right way. Right. So, you can see here, I put a screw right up top and at the bottom. Now, per the instructions, we are going to put a crap ton of screws all the way down the inside and then take these out and reverse them. And I think they get cut off because this is gonna go in there and you don't wanna be putting a you know, brush and firewood in here and be cutting yourself on all these screws. So they're gonna go from inside out, which is gonna be so much fun. So we'll speed this up again.
I took out the ones at the top and the bottom that I went from outside in, and then I put them all inside out because they're going to get cut off next. Because this is where all the brush is going. You don't want to get anything in there. That's what happens when you take it too low. It disintegrates. So, got all these cut off. So, they're even sharper than before. So we basically have reduced the uh, circumference of that barrel by five inches. So now, it will slide right into this barrel without any issue. Remember, always unplug it before you go and change it. Because this one has a unique design where all you have to do is squeeze it, but all you have to do, there's a little tab here. If you push the tab down and squeeze it, it's on. So it's very easy just to put your hand on it and brush it and it's on. So unplug it when you're changing the blade because you don't want your hands near that blade. All right, next I cut a square, three and a half inch square. So three and a half inch that way, three and a half inch that way. Made it out of cardboard. And we need to flip this over without cutting ourselves, because we're not wearing our gloves. And then on this side, I'm gonna take the uh, three inch square and I'm gonna draw a box all the way around it. And then we're gonna go all the way around till we get back to this side, which should be 18 squares. It'll make sense in a little bit. I take it you parking things because you're done? Oh, yeah, I should have been wearing glasses for my paint pen. All right, so as you can see there, I used my three and a half inch square made out of cardboard, and I cut, or, and I drew some little squares all the way around, and it ends up being 18. I start to the right of that, um, that cut, that seam right there. So that's one, and it ends at 18 with a little bit of, looks like an inch, inch and a half of dead space. So that's the next step. So now that we have all of these squares marked, we're gonna go to six, 12, and 18. So find six real fast, six, and for six, 12, and 18, we're gonna cut left side, bottom, and right side, not the rim, not crossing into this rim. So just left, bottom, right on six, 12, and 18. All right, now we got those cut up. Now they're gonna get bent in and up. So in and up. And this is also in the point in the video where the tutorial mentions, and I will too, that this is sharp metal. So gloves, glasses, all the safety stuff on, especially when cutting it, but especially when handling it, because this is very sharp. Also, if you're cutting in the garage like me, make sure there's no flammable items. Like I took the gasoline cans and I took them way outside. There's no other cardboard in here, close, but there's nothing flammable around me that's gonna explode. So you wanna do that, most definitely do that. All right, I got a little bit of the blade left. So next is taking all even numbers. So all remaining even numbers. And we're gonna cut the bottom, the left side, and the top under the rim. These are gonna be like fins to let air in. So bottom, left side, and top. Two, four, eight, 10, 14, 18. A lot of cutting. It's probably going to be more than one blade or one disc. So 
So I went ahead and did all the verticals because it's easy just to keep it all going one direction. Now I'll go back around and I'll cut bottom, top, bottom, top, all the way around. Probably should put a new blade on. I will, I will put a new blade on instead of being dumb and letting it explode again. And remember, when you're doing this, it's a burn barrel. It doesn't gotta be perfect. Most definitely does not have to be perfect. This is far from perfect. Now, I'm gonna go back through and put this down first. And we're gonna push all the evens in. So they're all gonna just flap in like little flappers. Um, probably gonna have to go back in and cut on the inside. It's easier to see on the inside because I, I missed a bunch. And to hammer it, hammer it. This is definitely the, uh, get your extension cord out of the way. This is definitely a uh, wear glove part of the, of the job. If all else fails, get the old sledge out. That'll take care of it. Lay it on its side. A few wax. All right, so I have enough of these in to form a vent and a, and a base. So we're gonna flip, flip this over, remembering it is super sharp. And look at that, it's standing up on its little legs now. Now we just need to Take our marker, make two circles around the top. One, the first circle is gonna be an inch and a half, and then the second circle is gonna be at another inch and a half. So inch and a half and then uh, three inches, all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a burn barrel. You're gonna burn junk in it. So I'm gonna kind of free hit. Mm, I shouldn't. I shouldn't, I should use a piece of cardboard. I shouldn't just do it. I'm gonna do it. So instead of getting a straight edge and drawing it all the way around, I'm just taking the marker and lightly connecting my two circles together. And this is where it gets even lazier. So we're just going to draw lines about an inch and a half all the way around like this just to give the gist of it. So cut, 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 only on the verticals. These are gonna be the fins that come in, you know, if you see a solo stove, it has the, the tilted in ring. We're making that tilted in ring. Gonna put the uh, PPE back on and make cuts all the way around. They say you can do it by hand. Oh yeah, you can do it by hand. You're just bending in every tab just a little bit so it's a little bit of a inward cone. You 
can really feel where the rusted side is. That side is rusted and it's so thin compared to like this side I'm on over here. It's kind of crazy. Starting to look like a burn barrel now. All right, next I'm gonna pre-drill with this uh, small drill bit. And in the center of all of these tabs, on the second line, I'm gonna put a hole right in the center. This is like the solo stove. This is where you're eventually gonna put in the, uh, the uh, bigger hole. But I'm gonna put the gloves back on for this since I have to handle the metal. I think if I actually used a one and a half inch square and marked it, I probably would have significantly less holes. I got a Milwaukee step drill. Basically, we're gonna go back around again and widen out every one of these holes. Milwaukee bit the dust. Time for DeWalt to take over. At some point the battery died on the camera, not the drill, but I have been very slowly and very surely drilling holes all the way around that second line. The first line is where we bent all these fins in. The second line I'm putting a hole in the center under every fin. It is a very tedious process. One at a time. Well, I guess that means I take a forced break as all the batteries are dead. We'll be back shortly. Well, it's been a bit. I'm back now. Still drilling. Somehow I got back and I thought, oh, I'll be on the next step now. It's time for the next step of this project. Nope, nope. We're still drilling. Finally, that, those holes took forever. I know on the other barrel I gotta do the same thing and then the directions call for cutting into the actual bottom of it to make a grate, but I think I'm gonna cut or drill more holes. So I probably got at least 60 more holes to drill through, but I think this is the end of this. Let's check it out. Well, I'm losing my table now because now we're working on the we're working on the second barrel. Okay, so now we're done with this one. We can put this to the side, get it out the way. Now we're moving on to the second one. This is the outer uh, barrel. So I'm gonna flip it over. I was using this as a nice table, but now, how did I already get spiders in that thing? Kind of similar deal as before. Gonna take the measuring tape and my paint pen. And I'm gonna measure a one and a half inch rim line and a, oof, I don't like that. One and a half inch line is here, three is here. See, these barrels are a little bit different than the one that, um, the one that's in the tutorial video. I got these ridges here, here, and here. So I might have to offset my lines a little bit. He did his at an inch and a half. I might do mine at an inch and two inches. Okay, so I have dotted lines going all the way around at an inch and two inches. And this isn't any science. I'm just drawing 
lines now connecting point to point. So I drew my two lines around here. I'm gonna do a little experimenting with it because if I put a hole here, the next hole is on the line, so I might, I might scoot them up a little bit. Basically, right now we're doing a ring of holes and then we're gonna do an offset ring of holes. So hole and then diagonal hole, diagonal hole. Um, so if I put like a, if I put a hole there and there, I'd put one either here or here. And here, and here, and here. So you see there, there's the alternating holes a little bit. So I did hole, 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 all the way around, and then each one I put I put a line at the top and the bottom because there's this lip here. So I might go hole, 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 and put one right up against the uh, lip. But it's going to take some experimentation. This is going to take definitely more than one day. We're at the super long process now of drilling pilot holes all the way around. You can kind of see I'm drilling holes around the top and then about an inch down drilling more holes. So now I get to do it like 70 more times. You're gonna really hate drills and step drill and step bits by the end of this project. All right, pre-drilling done all the way around. Now I need to get back to the step bit and drill some holes. That'll be tomorrow. See you in a bit. All right, next day here, and I am so tired of drilling holes. I put holes staggered all the way around this bin. This is the other bin. This is the first bin I was working on. This is the second. This is going to become, this is the open side, and this is gonna become the bottom of the bin. Um, so after drilling all of those holes, those are for lower air intake, flip this over, and now we get to measure and cut the bottom of this, which now becomes the top. This is what is gonna slide onto this one or something like that, and we'll find out. So we took the diameter of the other, this cut up barrel, which is 21 and a half, and then that gets measured out onto here, 21 and a half, right here, which doesn't seem right. Directions, directions. So this is where I potentially am gonna mess this up. So I'm trying to figure out the, the math, the geometry here, so, my diameter on the cut barrel is 21 and a half. 21 and a half exactly, 21, I guess, if you include like the thickness of the metal and all that. So this is 21. This is 22, about 22, 23. So if I cut a hole that is, say, 21, 20 and a half, 20 and a half, whoops. So mine is 20 and one half. I wanna put an inch, a circle that is an inch all the way around this barrel. So you can see here, I made an inch mark all the way around, lightly drew a circle. So this is going to be the part that gets removed. This also becomes the base plate that gets thrown into the bottom of there. Um, the directions call for, you know, cutting it up in a pizza pattern kind of thing. I'm going to, unfortunately, I don't want to, but I'm gonna use my um, step drill bit again, and I'm just gonna make lots of holes and make it similar like a solo stove, because they, they're, they're great, is a bunch of holes. I'm gonna do a, lots of little tiny holes. Not full on huge holes like the uh, sides of these are, but just tiny holes, and then I will go back and cut it. All right, 
You can probably see here, let's zoom in a little bit. Bunch of tiny little holes. Now put the step bit back in. Now I'm just gonna expand these holes. Kind of about the same size I did that one. Just, just a little bit. So close, so close. Another blade down. Got our top right there. Got the nice plate right here. Over there for now, nice and sharp. So here's the first piece we cut out. So theoretically, this, in all its sharp glory, fits right over top of this. Sort of, sort of. We're close, we're close here. I think we just have to bend a couple of these fins. Nice. Look at that. You can see it's sitting on top of there. It should sit down a little bit lower, but like on see on this side here, it's a little more open. And over there, it's a little tight. Maybe you'll see what happens first. Then down in there, there's the grate that I drilled all the holes out of. The other one had like vents, but I wanted this because solo stove uses a little hole. So I'm gonna try that instead. I can always change it because I have a second one over there. But, and on the outside we have all the holes down there, so that's where the air would get pulled in and then it would come up the channel into the holes there. And supposedly it would, supposedly it's gonna, it was gonna burn smokelessly. We'll see. I think I need to put some screws in the sides of it to make sure the whole thing stays together as one unit. I think I put them in the feet or somewhere like that so that, so it holds it. All right, we have some much bigger self tappers here. There we go. Got one to bite. The feet might not last. The feet look like they're probably gonna give me some issues. And honestly, I'm not really happy with the uh, screws because they're now pulling this thing and throwing it way off. All right, and we're gonna let it be there. Um, some things I noticed. I think one of the biggest issues was my burn barrel has these, um, both of them have this lip that goes around the bottom. So when I cut them and I made the feet, I couldn't bend the feet the three legs on the bottom to be super sturdy because there is this like ridge going through it so it doesn't want to bend. I'm sure there's a different way to do it but I'm not going to do anything about it this time. 
Um, it might end up just bending them out of the way and then sticking this on like say three cinder blocks to get it up off the ground. That might be the final solution for that. Um, I also didn't, I took out all of the self tappers from around the sides. It was making it warp and pull it in different directions. So the outer barrel, which is right here, the outer barrel started to not sit real right. Cause right now it's sitting in a position where it's kind of sitting on all these teeth for the most part. And there's not a whole lot of big gaps. So with, without messing with it, it's kind of, it's kind of in a perfect spot right now for me to take it outside and give it a test. You see how bad the tetanus is. So I'm going to do a short test today. There were a couple cardboard boxes in it. Maybe a few sticks, light it up, see what happens. And then in a few nights from now, I'll really throw a whole lot of stuff in here. We'll get this thing really up to temperature and we'll try it out. But for now, I'm gonna take it right out back and uh, try not to get tetanus and just light it up and see what happens. All right, having a burn barrel is nice because you can burn things you were supposed to burn two years ago. So we're gonna do that today. Now that's a smokeless burn barrel. That cardboard is going fast. Oh, it's coming out the holes. It was smokeless for a very short time and then it just started smoking. Well. seem to have a leak. You can see we have a little bit of escaping air right there. Woof. Too close, too close. A little bit of escaping air on that one side. The other side seemed to be okay. Like a little bit of leaking right there. Hmm. If it wasn't for those edges leaking. I think it's working pretty well. For a second, you could see the flames coming up through those inner holes. We'll do some adjustments though. It's hot though. Once it cools, I'll take the marker and I'll mark some areas off to uh, trim it at. I'll keep the alignment where it is now and then I'll take a little bit off that left side so it falls down onto the barrel a little bit more. I think it's just a little too high it's escaping right there all right so the fix i did i took a little bit out of the inside of the rim because it was leaking smoke was leaking out of the edge and then in the end i just kind of what i'm going to do right here i bent these fins back so they fit right up against it so there's no like air leaking last time i tested it there was like a small gap right here and smoke was just so, let's see how that goes. Got some cardboard. Finally cleaned up my front yard and got all the gigantic pieces of wood out. I bent one of my fins when I put my when I put the uh, wood in there. I'll get smokeless once it gets hot. Do you want this to keep going? How much B-roll do you want?